I'm here at Horn with Steve. I've been told he's a reaming master. What are we looking at right now? We're looking at the uh, horn reaming system, which has been around for quite a while now. Um, in this this guise, a couple of years ago we went to the small, and and now we're going to the large. So there's, so there's, there's this it's grown from this kind of standard, and you've realised there's been a need in the market. You've gone down to small diameters and up and to bigger diameters. Bigger diameters, yeah. Okay, so that need in the market. I mean, what? Why does? Why would someone go for one of these indexables? I've never used, never seen these, and never used one of these. I've just used solid reaming. Surely you can get a solid reaming from anywhere. Why should you go to Horn for one of these quite specialist reaming tools? The big advantage of the Horn system is that the inserts are fully ground. They're uh, accurate within uh, a couple of microns, and the big advantage is when that wears, you can swap the insert over, press cycle start, and you get, you'll be guaranteed that that is the same size that the previous one was. Okay. So repeatability is fantastic. So you, so you, the repeatability to, to a couple of micron is, is really impressive for a ground insert. Obviously, if it was pressed, there'd be nothing like that kind of repeatability. Exactly. Um, but what, what I find quite fascinating as well with reamers, normally I guess you might stick it in a heat shrink for that run-out control or a hydraulic chuck, because they both obviously have quite a good run-out control. But with a heat shrink, you've got to go stick it back in the heat shrink machine. You've got to put it in once that reamer's gone. With yeah. this, there's none of that. No, what we do, we have a um, run-out adjustment on the, the chucks or on the larger system, we've got the... Uh, Forge your chuck style, four screws to adjust the run out. So you, you clock the run out to your spindle, and once that's set, that, that's um, set for a, a long time. So all of that, ah, so I get that. So all of the work that you did setting your run out, because you, you've got to set the linear, the linear run out and also the angular run out. On these, because they're only 4.3 millimeters wide, you just set, you just set, the, set the radial run out. Uh, okay, so, so clock it on the end there. I tell customers to clock it within four microns. Right. I usually go in and do the initial training to make sure everybody knows how it's done. And it, it is pretty simple. Versus a longer reamer where it matters at the top and the bottom, which is much harder to, to yes. clock in. We, we do have specialist uh, reamers where we you have to use guide pads if we're going through a valve body or you know, that type of thing. And then we have to have axial and radial run out. We've got intermittent slots. But on the, most of these ranges where the, the inserts, fit, um, say it's only 4.3 wide, just the radial run out is, is, is perfect. And um, once it's set, like, like I say, unscrew the inserts, screw another one on, press cycle start, and it's as it was before before you, you had to change it. You've explained that in, in, in two minutes. I now understand exactly why I'd want one of these. It's fascinating. You're very welcome. <laughs> it's, it's fascinating how you set this run out, and this is quite a big, it can be a big job if, you've, if it's quite a difficult thing to clock in for someone who's not so skilled. All you've got to do is put all that work in, setting, setting the run out on this chuck or on this chuck. Yep. Then after that, you just change the tip. This is why they're a big hit with setters and operators, because they're so easy to use and efficient. I mean, the, the speed that these things run at, it, when I first started using them, I, I, I was, you really want to run it at that speed? And they do, they, they run at a really high, high, high speed and feed rate. I guess personally, looking at these, there's quite a lot of space for chip evacuation as well compared to a standard reamer. Yes, and, and uh, um, material removal, we keep it fairly low. So a, a typical uh, AP, a depth of cut, you'll be looking at maybe 0.1 up to 0.2. It's not huge. Typically. Yeah. But, but what I find more interesting then, I mean, the cutting speed you could talk about all day, the parameters and what the metal yeah, removal yeah. rate and whatnot. But what I find fascinating is the ergonomics, because not a lot of the time do cutting tool manufacturers talk about helping operator setters on the shop floor. It's all about productivity. Yeah. So actually, this is helping the operators as well as making sure you've got a productive hole. And that's, that's exactly it. And, and of course, if operators find it easy and, and ergonomic, then they're going to want to use it more. Yeah, I mean, and look at the size of this, Jesus. I yeah. mean, it's not like this is just a specialist little thing. This goes up to a massive size. Look at that. Yeah. And and these, are, we, we actually offer a refurbishment on the inserts on the, these new large sizes. You can see they're separate inserts, and it'll be a return to base, regrind, and return to customer refurbished. Which is where the productivity comes in for the, not the, just the guys on the shop floor, but the guys running the, the production and the numbers and whatnot. Exactly, that's, that's, that's the big advantage. This is a solution for everyone in the company and they're all happy. That's the plan. Yes, I'll agree with you there. <laughs>